Welcome to Maths with Bob. Today we're looking at uh, applications of calculus to the physical world. Uh, growth and decay version 1, this is the actual simple growth and decay where the actual rate of change of something is actually proportional to the amount of uh, something present, uh, which is written normally like this. Uh, so we normally say, okay, uh, dq dt okay, is proportional to the amount present, which is Q. Okay. Now, uh, a lot of uh, times we, we don't like this proportionality symbol. I mean, uh, in physics, uh, we have a constant proportionality. So in maths, we do a similar sort of thing. To make that a um, proportional symbol, an equality, we actually write uh, it as an equal sign. So we normally would rub this out and uh, say, okay, this is equal to K times Q. So where K, um, K is a growth constant or decay constant. So sometimes if uh, K is positive, we know that the thing is growing, and if K is negative, it's decaying. So growth and decay occurs in many situations. Um, uh, radioactivity, cooling of substances, uh, change in pressure. Uh, K, uh, sometimes population is uh, said to be modeled on this sort of equation. This is actually a differential equation, a simple order one differential equation. Okay, we're now going to go through and solve this. Uh, Let's have a look. How would we solve this? Okay, so the first thing is, let's just, just have a quick look. Let's start off again. Okay. So, dq dt, uh, okay, we know it's equal to kq. So what we normally would do is turn it upside down and go, okay, dt dq, okay, is equal to 1 on kq. Okay, then we integrate both sides with respect to uh, q. Okay, so we integrate this, integrate this side with respect to Q, and we end up getting what? Uh, dt, integral of dt is equal to uh, basically 1 on K, integral of 1 on Q dq. Now, obviously this is a log, okay, so we end up getting what? Um, integral of uh, dt is actually, we say is t, okay, therefore t is equal to 1 on K, I'll just type it on K L N Q. Okay, that's not too good. I'll just okay, this is just okay. One on K L N Q. And there will be some sort of constant integration involved, okay, which really is occurring on both sides, but I'm moving it all over one side and amalgamating all the constants into that C there. Now, what do we do next? Well we multiply by K, we end up getting K T is equal to uh, L N Q. Q plus, uh, I'll just call it KC. We can actually call that another constant if we wanted to. Okay, then we basically move the KC across. We end up getting what, KT minus KC is equal to LN Q. Then we uh, raise everything to the power E. Okay, we end up getting what? E to the KT minus KC is equal to E to the LN Q. Okay, which hopefully we know is actually Q. They are inverse functions. Okay. Now, what about initially t is equal to zero? Okay, so what's happening at t is equal to zero? Well, let's have a look. T is equal to zero, what happens? T is equal to zero. This is the initial amount which is normally present. Okay, so if we put t is equal to zero, we get what? E to the minus kc is just equal to q. So this e to the minus kc is the amount present initially, and sometimes we actually uh, let this amount be say, some other constant, like a, for instance. Okay, so we normally let this amount be say a. Okay, so we then rewrite this expression. Okay, yeah. let's have a look. We rewrite this as. Um, okay, let's change it to blue. Okay, so we now have that uh, q. Okay, is equal to what? e to the kt, now minus kc, so actually it's actually times what e to the minus kc, and you might remember we... Okay, so we've got q is equal to e to the kt times e to the minus kc, and you might remember we let that be a. Now, so q, uh, okay, so q is equal to a e to the kt. Okay, so this is, if you like, the solution to the differential equation. Um, 
That's something we can quite easily verify that. Uh, if that's Q, uh, put it to the left hand side and say, OK, what's dQ dt? You might remember multiplying, or I should say, uh, differentiating exponentials, that k would come down. And on the left hand side, you'd get k times a e to the kt would be the differentiation of that q. And on the uh, right hand side, you get kq. Well, a e to the kt times k is just you know, k a e to the kt. So the left hand side equals the right hand side. It's very easy to verify that that actually is the solution. And, and that's actually how we actually prove it. We will now go on ahead and try and use this particular idea. Now, sometimes A is written as Q naught, um, and we get these terms like half lives and things coming into all these problems. So we'll just look at a problem. Simple case where the rate of ch uh, change of uh, mass in this case is proportional to the mass itself, and it just gives us an equation m equals m naught e to the minus kt. Okay, so. Um, with Newton's law of cooling, on the other hand, we, uh, we end up getting a more complicated expression, which we'll look at later. Now, the first thing is, uh, what is m naught? Well, I always think uh, m naught is the initial mass, so if um, we substitute in t is equal to zero. So let's actually go through and have a look. Okay, uh, so if okay, t is equal to zero, okay, we have that m is equal to m naught. Uh, m naught, uh, okay, e to the minus kt. Now, if t is zero, we get basically times e to the power zero, which we all should know is one. So really, this means that the mass initially is in fact equal to uh, m zero. Okay, so. Well, Okay, so what is M0? That, well, if 200 kilograms decays to 195, okay, so we hopefully can see that M0 is in fact, uh, okay, uh, 200 kilograms. So M0 is in fact 200 kgs. Now this al allows us to basically say, therefore, that M is equal to what, 200 e to the minus kt. Now you can see here there are a couple of unknowns. Obviously, uh, k is the decay constant or growth constant. In this case, it's going to be decaying. And uh, m is the mass at a particular time with that particular decay constant. So our first job usually is to find that constant k. And uh, normally we get enough information, uh, the sort of boundary conditions, if you like to find the, um, the constants, and uh, in this case we've got like a 195 after 10 years. So if we take time as 10 years, so if you like, uh, when t is equal to say 10, we know that m, the mass, is now only 195. So we just set the equation up, uh, okay, 195 is equal to 200, now e to the minus kt, and we know that uh, t is 10, taking time in years, so it's minus 10 lots of k. And we need to solve this for k. Okay, um, how we do that usually is to divide everything by 200 to start with and get to 195 on 200. That equals e to the minus 10t, 10, 10, I should say 10k. Uh, and then we take the logs of both sides. Uh, in fact, uh, what happens if we take the logs of both sides? We end up getting what? Uh, okay, so let's actually go through this process. Um, okay, so we have a, therefore, take the log. So we have ln. Now I'm going to take it to the log to base e of 195 over 200. Now that becomes equal to ln of e to the minus 10k. Now we hopefully can see that that's actually just minus 10k using the log laws. Okay, ln e of e, which is just 1. And this allows us obviously to find what k is, you can see here. Therefore, k, okay, we'll just write it over here. Uh, therefore, what k is equal to minus 1 on 10. Okay, ln of, you can see here, 195 over 200. Okay, so that's what k is going to be. Okay, how are we going to use this? Okay, you can see here I've just written uh, okay, the k in, so it's m is equal to 200 
e to the minus kt, uh, and you can see here, I could actually rewrite 195 on 200 as 39 over 40, but I'm just going to leave it as it is at the moment. Okay, this is an exact form. Okay, rather than try and work out the k value and round it off to so many decimal places, we'll just leave it and work it all out at the end. Now, what are we after? Well, if you look at A, you can see here, um, we're after basically um, that, in fact, part A is that T is equal to 15. So we need to put 15 in, so for the time, T, and you can see I've written the T in red there. So basically, uh, okay, so M is now equal to 200. Now, okay, it's going to be E now to the minus. Now, I'll just write that as minus 15 over 10, or minus 3 over 2, LN, okay, 195. Okay, let's just rewrite that now. It's 39 over 40, just to make it a little bit easier. And you can see I could, could have written uh, 15 on 10 as minus 3 on 2. But now all I need to do is put this into the calculator and to try and work out what my M is. And if you just put that into the calculator, you end up getting roughly about 192, okay, point uh, 547, okay, 0.547 kilograms. Okay, that's going to be correct to the nearest gram, you can see here. Okay, okay to the nearest gram, right. Okay, so that's how much is present after 15 years. Okay, you can see it's dropped. Oh, not too much, about two and a half. Okay, after the 10 years. Okay, so we now need to look at the half-life. Okay, we're now going to look at what's called the half-life. Now, how do I work out the half-life? Well, what does half-life mean? Well, it means that basically the time it takes for the amount, the initial amount, to reduce by a half, I suppose you could say it like that. Uh, so let's have a look. So we want the time. The time is, okay, the question here. Uh, the mass actually has been reduced from 200, okay, to 100, okay, okay, and we just, and we know the k, okay, we, uh, we had the, the, the k constant, uh, k we worked out was minus 1 on 10 ln 39 on 40, okay, we've worked at that before. Okay, so it's just a matter of uh, putting this into the formula and trying to work out what the time is, okay. So, therefore, okay, we know that m is equal to, what, 200, e to the minus 1 on 10, okay, ln uh, 39 on 40, uh, t. And the t is what we're after in this case, okay. So let's put it in. Uh, so we now have 100. Uh, and let's divide by 200 at the start as well. So we end up getting this uh, mine e to the minus 1 on 10, uh, ln 39 on 40. T. Okay, let's make T red again. Keep T red T. Here we are. Now we can see, uh, hopefully, we can see that, okay, this expression here, yeah, simplifies to a half. Okay, so let's actually just simplify that to a half. Okay, let's rewrite that as a half. Okay. Uh, okay. So, a half. Okay, so we need to solve that expression. Uh, obviously, we need to take the logs again, uh, okay, to drop that power down, okay, this is one of the log laws. So, okay, how will we do this? Well, we end up getting, okay, therefore, say ln a half, okay, is equal to ln of the other side, okay, so we get uh, ln of this bit, uh, e to the minus 1 on 10, okay, ln 39 on 40, okay, t. Now, obviously, this is going to come down. This power is going to come down. Okay, so what are we going to get? Okay, we're going to get minus 1 on 10, uh, ln uh, 39 on 40t, okay, uh, by ln e. Now, as you know, hopefully ln e of, well, ln of e, log to the base e of e is actually just 1. So this is actually... Okay, one. So this allows us to solve for t. So therefore, okay, uh, t is just equal to uh, ln of a half all over this one here, which is minus one hundred ten ln, as you can see here, 
39 on 40. Okay, so let's just let's go over that T. So this is the red T here, the time we're after. Okay, now what is the time? Well, obviously, this is just a calculated exercise. I'm just going to rewrite that in red again, but the calculated exercise, okay, you have to be a little bit careful. The top is a negative and the bottom is a negative, so that should turn out to be a positive time. And uh, when you actually uh, work it out, okay, when you work this out, it just works out to be to the nearest year 274 years. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so it's about 200 and uh, sorry, 74 years to the nearest year 274. So what does this mean? Well, this means that. The half-life of this uh, radioactive substance, okay, is about 274 years. That means it'll take 274 years for it to decay, to decay to about half its original amount. Okay. Well, thank you for watching. We'll have a look at another example shortly.